chairman of the House. Okay, Benghazi, yeah. Reform Committee investigating her from Benghazi. Uh, some others, Jason Chaffetz, congressman from Utah, some, some folks may be familiar with also investigating that. That's been the major area of investigation on her time at state. Did any uh, did anything go back beyond? I mean, did you look uh, at anything uh, back to the Clinton days when she not 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 related to women, but when she testified under oath to a grand jury? I don't recall. I can't remember. I don't recall uh, relating to the cattle futures, the billing records, Vince Foster. Any of that uh, come up at all? We didn't go back into that time. We really just looked from the end of the 2008 primary through her time at state. We felt like. That was very unexplored territory. There's a State Department press corps, but uh, a lot of the stories are, you know, are, are more surface level or in the moment from them. We thought that it deserved a deep dive. What do you uh, think is going to be the uh, the albatross around her neck if, assuming she runs and uh, let's let's say she gets the nomination, let's say she she survives the left, and I'll get to that. Maybe I'm working backwards, but I will get to that in a second. But what, what's what's going to be the albatross around her neck when she faces a Republican? Well, I think there are three major things that we uh, look at in the book uh, that, that would probably fit under that description. Uh, number one, of course, Benghazi. She's going to uh, make the case that uh, she's got experience uh, in national security, uh, which, which she does. Uh, but I think that that's something that Republicans are going to use to uh, undermine uh, that, that sort of area of her campaign should she run. Uh, in particular, we talked to Sean Spicer, the uh, spokesman for the Republican National Committee. He said those ads you've seen on Benghazi in the past, if she runs, she should get used to seeing them uh, a lot. Uh, so that's one area. I think the, you know, the lack of a marquee peace deal, uh, the inability to, to have that sort of crown jewel is something else that you're going to hear a lot about as she uses uh, her time at state to, to try to make that uh, national security and foreign policy experience argument. And then the third thing, uh, and, I, you know, I don't think this is something that uh, was necessarily expected to come out of this book, uh, but we, we really detail the way in which she uh, engaged on health care when the president was trying to pass that bill. Uh, you know, to the public, she uh, remained completely apart from it. She didn't want to, uh, you know, be toxic. She had been uh, there in 93, 94 trying to do health care. I think she also wanted to remain uh, as much as she could a partisan and a political in that secretary of state job. Uh, but the truth is, as we reveal in the book, uh, she talked to some members of Congress about their votes. Uh, she uh, was back-channeling with uh, Rahm Emanuel and Jim Messina, two of Obama's top aides, about uh, how to deal with Congress and her experience during the Clinton administration. And then uh, we go inside one uh, particularly important cabinet meeting uh, after what you might call the Tea Party summer in 2009. A lot of the Democrats were worried that other agenda items were going to get subsumed into that, that uh, sort of maelstrom and they were going to lose out on the things they cared about. She made a uh, an impassioned plea to the rest of the cabinet to get focused on health care. And Obama's aides have told us that uh, that may have been an underappreciated moment uh, in terms of the sort of larger Democratic Party, but definitely a pivotal one. So I think that's something you're also going to hear a lot uh, about in the uh, the general election in 2016, should she be the Democratic nominee. We're talking to Jonathan Allen uh, here on the C. Molesberg Show. He is the uh, uh, White House Chief, uh, 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 Bureau Chief for uh, Bloomberg, and he's also the co-author of HRC, uh, bestseller on uh, Hillary Rodham Clinton. Uh, what about, uh, right as your book was coming out, there was a story done uh, at Washington Free Beacon on the uh, so-called Hillary Papers. Uh, Diane Blair, I believe, uh, Hillary's uh, former, one of her closest friends during the years in the White House. Um, any, any regrets that you guys didn't look into those papers which were apparently available? Any, anything you would like to have seen uh, for yourself that you could have put in the book that didn't make it in because of that? Well, it's really uh, interesting reporting by the uh, the Washington Free Beacon reporter. I think she did a great job. And it's interesting you say that because you know that every media source just about that refers to it calls it the a, a it was a anti Clinton website. You know, to to to, to put a, a a disclaimer on anything that might be credible that comes out of it. You realize that that's how the media portrays it. I understand that's how it's being portrayed by by some folks, but I, I disagree with those folks. I think it's excellent reporting. Uh, I think it adds a little bit to the picture of Hillary Clinton at that time. Uh, you know, I don't have regrets about not going into it simply because it, it wasn't the part of uh, her career that we were looking at. But, uh, but you know, my, my hat's off to the reporter that went back and found that stuff. And, you know, it's been out there for a while for folks to look at. Uh, you know, Carl Bernstein in his book had gotten access to some of those papers, didn't report some of the things that were reported in the Free Beacon story. But, uh, but you know, where I, I, thought it was, uh, I thought it was really good work. 
Um, uh, my boss, the CEO of uh, Newsmax uh, Media, uh, Chris Ruddy, wrote a piece today, uh, an editorial, a column, uh, if you will, uh, uh, saying that uh, Senator Rand Paul uh, has made a mistake by uh, going where he's been going, uh, bringing up uh, Bill Clinton's uh, uh, you know, sexual escapades and trying to make it uh, stick to, to Hillary Clinton. Do you agree uh, with, and not having read the column possibly, but that's the gist of it, do you agree with that concept or that, that opinion, or do you think Rand Paul's doing a smart thing? Well, I think, uh, look, you know, without getting into what the strategy ought to be, uh, you know, for, for one party or the other, I would say that uh, I think there are a lot of Republicans who are uh, concerned that the last time uh, there was a huge focus on, on uh, Bill Clinton's uh, escapades, I think that's the word you used, uh, it, it backfired. If you look at it, Bill Clinton's approval ratings went up. Hillary Clinton's approval ratings went up. The Democrats captured a seat in the House in the in the uh, midterm and the second term of a presidency, which is, uh, you know, extremely unusual. So I think there's a strategic element to that. Uh, but look, Rand Paul is, is trying to uh, talk to a, a new crop of voters, a younger crop of voters, some of whom, many of whom may not remember uh, Monica Lewinsky or may not have been really conscious of politics at the, at the moment. So I understand what he's trying to do, uh, but I also understand the argument that, uh, that your boss and that, uh, that Karl Rove and others within the party have made that this might not be uh, a winning strategy. Jonathan, um, do you think she will, uh, Hillary will run? I, I do. In fact, the way that we frame it in the book is that she's been running all along, and the question is whether she'll stop running if, uh, you know, if readers uh, go in and take a look. We sort of make the argument and, and detail how the Clinton operation uh, grew while she was at the State Department, how she used that uh, platform to continue to build relationships with the business community, to build the relationships with, uh, with donors, with other politicians. I haven't heard her say that she... And, uh, and also uh, how Bill Clinton uh, went out on the campaign trail to take care of family business and settle some scores. Well, okay, uh, t t t two more questions here. Uh, what about the, the, if, you, if you get the, the Hillary, you get Bill also? I mean, is that still true? I think it is true, and it's one of the biggest questions for her going into a 2016 campaign is what role would Bill Clinton play, not only in a campaign, but if she were to be elected presidency, how does that work with a uh, former president roaming the halls of the East Wing of the White House? Uh, you know, they made the argument about a co-presidency back in 1992. Right. It didn't stop them from... Uh, winning the White House, but obviously the reaction to her when she, as First Lady, took on a major policy initiative uh, on health care was negative, not just from Republicans, but she ran into a lot of resistance from Democrats on Capitol Hill. Uh, I think there's a lot of complications there, and it's certainly something that she'll be forced to map out for the public, uh, you know, if she's, uh, in fact, a candidate. All right. You've dealt with her. You've interviewed her. Or you have, you've dealt with her staff. You know probably more about her than most people. Uh, would you vote for her? <laughs> um, I, I keep my uh, I keep my votes to myself, but it would certainly depend on who she was running against. Okay, um, in the primaries, even uh, I don't vote in Democratic primaries. Okay, uh, wow, so it means you're not a, at least not a registered Democrat. I'm, I'm a registered independent. Okay, I, and and what about the challenge from the left, real quick? Uh, do you think she'll face one, and and who could be the biggest problem for her? I think somebody will run. Uh, it's not clear to me that there's somebody who will run who will be able to defeat her. I actually think what, you know, one of the, the issues for her is if she goes into a general election without any competition, uh, she may be untested on some of these big questions. Right. Hey, a pleasure talking to you, Jonathan. Thank you very much. My pleasure, Steve. Take care. Take care. Jonathan Allen, ladies and gentlemen, uh, White House Bureau Chief for Bloomberg and the co-author of HRC. We'll talk about all this and more with the panel up next right here on the Steve Malzberg Show.